Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Michael okay. Saltzman. I'm the director of digital products at Blue Sky Bio. I'd like to welcome everyone who's here to join us today and to kick off the 2022 webinar series. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers covering a wide variety of interesting topics and information regarding the schedule and upcoming webinar events can be seen at blueskyplan.com forward slash 2022. Some recent updates while everyone is joining. Over the past few days, we've pushed out a new version of the Blue Sky Plan software that's released 4.9. You should have been prompted to update your software. And of course, you can download the update from the Blue Sky Bio website if you haven't been prompted by the software directly. The new release includes completely automatic nerve detection, improvements to the surgical guide wizard, and endodontics mode, improvements to line or process flow, improved video export options, and much more. Blue Sky Bio is continuing to aggressively develop and improve all of our digital products, including, of course, Blue Sky Plan, but also blueskymeet.com for video conferencing, labpronto.com to get help, to get any help you need with digital planning and or manufacturing of digital products at great prices, biobigbox.com for your online data transmission storage. And we will have some announcements soon regarding our iSmile teledentistry application. And of course, all the Blue Sky Bio digital products are accessible through a single login, a single username and password. So stay tuned for updates. There's a tremendous amount going on. And one of the best ways to stay up to date is through our webinar series. A few technical items regarding the webinar presentation itself. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them into the Q&A question and answer box. We'll be sending the CE credits via email usually within a few days of the webinar presentation. Definitely should get it within a week or so. And this webinar and future webinars are recorded and available on our website and via our social channels, of course, barring any technical issues. Today, we have the privilege of hearing Dr. Robert Mickley give the presentation. Dr. Mickley is a recognized expert in implantology, lectures extensively on the topic to other dental professionals throughout the tri-state area and really throughout the world. He runs an in-office mentorship program for general dentists, providing hands-on instruction in implant surgery. And I expect that we're gonna be hearing more about that during the presentation today. Dr. Mickley is a close friend of Blue Sky Bio, an integral member of the team. Being a clinical consult to digital teams involved in education through Blue Sky Bio educational events and his own mentoring programs and is part of the Blue Sky Bio clinical support team. You may have spoken to him if you contacted Blue Sky Bio for clinical support. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mickley, who will be presenting on the use of surgical guides for your practice, a step-by-step -step guide for fabricating surgical stents utilizing Blue Sky Plan. Robert? Okay. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for taking time at the end of our long work days. I just finished up my day. Uh, and we're gonna be discussing a little bit of background about surgical guides. And we'll do a live demo of how to design your, your first surgical guide. Um, if you're brand new to surgical guides, you, this is the right place for you. If you've already done a bunch, um, you know, you'll still get a good experience of seeing uh, just from an outside perspective of how I personally plan them um, and could pick up some little pearls and nuggets. Uh, I want to keep this as interactive as possible. So anyone send in questions as we go along, Michael will jump in and, and uh, let me know because I can't see them on my screen directly. Uh, if you have a case you'd like us to plan live for you, we're happy to do that. I left my email address uh, below, just send it via BioBigBox, the ICOM and STL files. And if you don't even know what those are, you're in the right place. We'll talk about them as well. Okay, great. So let's get started. Yeah, just a very quick background about myself. I'll skip through this quickly. We only have an hour tonight. Um, uh, my background is in uh, surgery and prosthetics, although my practice is limited to surgery, uh, but I aid all my referring doctors in the prosthetic aspect. Uh, so I get a good a dose of placing uh, restorations, but I don't get to bill for them. So that's the only difference. Uh, 
and we run a mentorship program just uh, getting you involved in implants to whatever level you are, level one, level two, level three programs, um, specializing in uh, getting doctors started with any new procedure. That's really what we pride ourselves on. Uh, if you have any questions, there's my email address. Uh, jot that down. It's also in the chat. Uh, feel free to send in any questions along the way. I also have the privilege of uh, being on board with the clinical team with Blue Sky Bio. So if you've ever called with some clinical questions, I'm one of the people who in between patients <laughs> gets to answer the phone. Good. All right. So uh, what exactly is guided surgery? Um, it is a template that's going to help us place the surgical device in the intended location. And it's not just us as dentists that are doing this. Um, you know, as, I, as, I, as I'm active in the world of scanning and, and placing and, and uh, working with DICOMs, you see that we're not, dentists are not the only people involved in this. Uh, physicians are as well. This is a case I saw posted um, where they're basically doing the same thing we are, taking a DICOM of a CT scan of a patient, um, designing after a fracture of where the bone they would like to place to have it align, where their plates uh, are going to want to line up exactly. They will 3D print the bone in advance and a custom jig of how to place this on, on top and go ahead and do the surgery. Uh, pretty much exactly what we're doing. Uh, I always will tease my uh, colleagues in the orthopedic world that we have our, our screws have to go exactly in the right spot. They just need to fix us, fixate something in the place. We need to have a crown sit on top of here on occlusion. So we have to be a little more precise than they do. But um, yeah, just to see the same concepts going on, bouncing ideas off each other is a lot of fun. So guided surgery, what are some of the advantages? Uh, obviously safety. Uh, we talk about this with our patients all the time. Uh, you know, why are we doing this? I charge a nominal fee for my guides. Um, I charge $350. Um, I print them in-house. You can see my Form 3B behind me. I've got a few other printers, but the Form 3B I've found is the is the uh, easiest because it can be delegated very well. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but safety is a big one. Um, we avoid nerves, we avoid sinuses, or punch our sinuses as we intend to for a sinus lift, and avoiding adjacent roots, even in tight spaces. And areas where you know we want to get into a, a socket that's that's close to a nerve, where freehand this would be insane to even try, because it's just way too close, and you don't have a stop that's really going to stop you somewhere. Um, but with a guide, that's not a problem. And we can avoid areas around a sinus. This is one where uh, the sinus allowed us to place one on an angle. It's not the ideal placement, but it allowed us to avoid any additional grafting, which the patient, patient really didn't want to do. So it allows us to place the implants exactly where we plan them on the screen, and it just really revolutionizes how we place implants. The accuracy of placement, and especially speed of surgery. Um, I you know, my patients will ask, you know, we, we were here for 20 minutes and it cost me all this money. Uh, that's true. And I say we can sit and talk for longer, but would you rather me be done with surgery and have it done well the first time quickly than taking a long time figuring things out at surgery? So I will spend my time with a cup of coffee, um, you know, planning these implants uh, in advance and having a guide printed rather than spending chair time doing it while my patients are there. And it also helps me really integrate the restorative plan and makes the, the in my case, the referring doctor feel very part of the surgery. Uh, it's not just just showing up the day of the restoration and let's figure out where this is. They know in advance uh, where that tooth was planned. If they have any input of where to put it, um, they'll let me know. And it just makes the whole process a lot more streamlined. And also when the patient gets back to the general dentist, they feel a lot more a part of the, of the situation uh, that they know that their doctor has been a part of this planning process the whole time. Disadvantages. Well, costs, I leave as a question mark, and we're going to discuss this uh, in some depth here, because this early on in the days of 3D printing was a big deal because it required a, a high cost to get into the game. Learning curve um, is there, but that's been shortened and shortened with a lot of the AI that has been added to Blue Sky Plan. I can't even tell you the difference of, of what it used to be planning a case and what it is now. And we'll see that when we get to the hands-on portion. Knowledge base, you certainly have to know what you're doing. Um, 
But again, the more you're able to outsource things, the less knowledge you have to have yourself. You have to have knowledge of things need to get done. But once you have a guide, the overall knowledge base is pretty low because you know how to place an implant already. It's just going to get you guided into place. Uh, limited irrigation to osteotomy is a concern in some situations, uh, but you'll see when we design guides, I leave a lot of windows open uh, to place them. I've even seen some people will put a port for the irrigation right onto the guide. That's certainly an option. Uh, but as long as you leave windows and are pumping uh, your drill in and out, differently than you would if you're placing it freehand, enough fluid will get in, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, limited patient opening. If a patient can't open and you're trying to place a second molar, a guide may not be the best idea because you won't be able to get over the top and get it in. That has changed significantly uh, with Blue Sky Bio's fully guided kit because there's no keys involved. So in order to clear over the guide, there's a lot less room that you'll need. So something to bear in mind before um, you know, creating a guide that you may or may not use uh, if the patient has limited opening. But if you're printing in-house or your costs are so low and you, you know, worst case scenario, in some situations, you may not be able to use it. Um, in my experience, that's already much, much more uh, limited today than it was just a couple of years ago. So we talk about the learning curve. Um, you know, we're, we're loading a CT scan. Again, if you're, if you're brand new to that, uh, we'll talk about how to do that also. You're going to trace the uh, inferior alveolar nerve. That's also been integrated into the AI software uh, with Blue Sky Plan. Um, you still have to check it and, and verify it, but uh, the process of clicking every step of the nerve has been taken off our hands. Loading a digital model is simply a click of a button now. Uh, a digital wax up. Um, the next update is going to have a, uh, an update where it'll actually place the crown in for you. We've got to test it. Works really, really well. But just placing a single crown is no big deal. Merging the scans and the models. Again, this used to be very tedious with lots of markers all over the place and scan appliances. Uh, and sometimes we still do go back and use that for cases with lots of metal or fully dentalous patients. But uh, if you've got a patient with, with teeth and uh, have a good scan with not a lot of artifacts, it will, with one click, merge you right into place. Um, planning the implants in the best restorative and surgical position. Again, what this means is once we know where our crown is going to go, and I always plan my crowns first, then I will decide where the, the implant will best be served. So if I've got plenty of bone, that's easy. I put it in the most ideal location. But sometimes you have limited bone and you've got to really uh, maneuver exactly into the right spot. So you, you can then decide based on my surgical problems of limited bone, how am I going to get this restoration to fit? So I want that question answered before the implant's placed, not afterwards, and trying to get a crown into a bad situation. Um, selecting the proper guide tube with a fully guided kit, you just have one tube. So that made life very easy. But if you have different kits or other guides or other kits you want to use, it's all part of the learning curve to learn how to set that up. Uh, designing the guide outline is very simple with a couple of clicks. Again, you become much more streamlined. Printing the guide. That can be outsourced, certainly. Um, you don't have to have a printer, but once you get going with a few of these, uh, you definitely print your in-house is a, a huge advantage. Um, inserting a guide to verifying seating, we'll talk about that as well. That's probably our most important point, just verifying that it's seated properly. And again, used to be a big deal that they wouldn't fit a lot of times. Um, historically, the early papers on guided surgery, there's some crazy number of like, 60% of guides that were made were not used for surgery. That is, I think, turned on its head completely. Uh, there are some guides, I'm sure, that are not used, but just about every guide I print we're using for surgery. So what do you need to create a surgical guide? So you'll need a CT scan. That's, that's obvious. Um, the CT scanner could cost you around the $85,000 range, give or take, um, but that's about where you're at. Uh, that's if you have it in-house. Intraoral scanners, this is uh, 30,000 when I paid for my CareStream 3600. Uh, nowadays, you can get a Medit for, I think, about 15 to 18,000, which is going to be my next scanner that I'm going to upgrade to in my office. Uh, surgical Play software, uh, that on average will cost you about $5,000 if you're buying it. Guided surgical kit will cost you about $3,500. A 3D printer could cost you anywhere between 1,500 to 4,000 or more or less but a wide range of printers. And a computer with a good graphics card that will make your life easier for planning 
will cost you this actually number has been inflated post COVID, but um, this is about what your startup costs could be, but they don't have to be. This is the Maserati version of what we're talking about. Um, but there's a lot of corners you can cut and come out with the same surgical guide. So the CT scan. So you don't have to have your own in-house, although it's a huge advantage. You could send patients out and they can get scanned. That's going to cost you somewhere in the realm of 200 to 200 to $300 versus owning. Again, owning is great, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, you could finance it as I did mine. Uh, it was the first purchase I made when I, uh, when I uh, started this practice. Uh, it was a scary endeavor because it was a hundred and $28,000, I believe, uh, but I financed it over 60 months and it really paid for itself and then some. And it's a constant flow of income uh, because I'm taking lots of scans. Uh, I charge $250 for a scan in my office. Um, so I don't keep the fees too high, but it's enough that if people are flowing through and it's paying for itself over and over and over again. So I don't see it as a, it was a, really an investment with um, financing, you know, very little overhead and it was paying for itself in the monthly payments. So something to keep in mind. Intraoral scanner, again, that number is much lower now. You don't have to take an intraoral scanner. You could do a desktop scanner, which is much less, or you can send it to your local laboratory and they'll be happy to scan it for you for a few bucks. Or the Ferguson technique, which we'll talk about briefly, uh, which was Rick Ferguson, uh, genius concept of scanning uh, a PBS impression. And uh, since then already for years, Blue Sky Plan has integrated that as an option of bringing it into Blue Sky Plan. So it will make your life very easy as well. And that's what a desktop scanner would look like. And scanners are a great thing, but again, digitizing a patient's teeth is a pretty easy thing to do nowadays. You don't have to have an intraoral scanner, but there's so many uses in dentistry for intraoral scanners. Um, I'm finding that you know more and more, I would guess of the, we've got about 250 participants here. I'm gonna guess by a show of hands of people who are here, um, I'm going to guess about 100 plus will have, will have uh, digital scanners in the office. That's my guess. Welcome to chime in the chat if you have one or not. But they're becoming much more popular because there's so much we can do with them. All right. So Rick Ferguson, a personal hero of mine, for all he's done for the 3D printing world and dentistry is really can't be said enough and constantly doing. Um, Rick is really a great guy and super approachable. Uh, any questions with regarding 3D printing, he's my go-to guy. And he came up with this concept where he would take a PBS impression um, with a few markers on it and scan the patient while they're wearing the impression, take out the impression, uh, and then have that scanned itself in the CT scanner. And this is what a DICOM will look like of a PBS impression. And then trace the outside of it, and it will invert your model basically creating a digital stone cast of the impression. And that's already been uh, linked into place by, this, by the uh, radiographic markers. So it makes life very easy and gets you a perfect merge. And it's a great technique to have. Uh, again, I'm not using it most of the time now, but every now and then when someone has a lot of metal and you wanna make sure to remove that artifact, this is the best way to do it. Uh, surgical planning software, again, you, you talk at some of the early days of these of surgical planning, these were massively expensive endeavors with annual licensing fees, unless you were doing this so much um, that it made sense for the you know general dentist who was dabbling in implants, it was you know un, unthinkable. But Blue Sky Plan completely changed that. And mostly because the download is free. Um, and running it will cost you $15 an export. It's really like the most cost-effective thing possible. And I tell you know, the, uh, Michael specifically who's dedicated much of his professional life to building Blue Sky Plan, more than anything that they've given to the dental world has been this software because it really just opened up the whole world of uh, CT planning and revolutionized dentistry. And I think in, you know, well, we all wanna leave legacy someday and what they've done with, with, uh, with CT planning and Blue Sky Plan is really remarkable. And a guided surgery kit, um, the Blue Sky Plan guided surgery kit I use every day of the week. Uh, I use it guided and non-guided, and it's fantastic. To me, it's really a no-brainer. As anyone asks me which, which kit should I use to get started with uh, any surgery, I tell them get the guided kit because in no time, when you start placing implants, you'll move into guides pretty quickly. 
And because it could work for both, it's a no brainer is it, it's the one kit that you'll need in the office. And again, older kits had lots of screws, lots of parts, blue sky, um, fully got a kit, no, no sleeves. Um, it can even be done keyless um, and it can be done sleeveless. So it's again, a no brainer and it can be done without a surgical guide at all. Good, and then we can talk about pilot drills and one-cut drills. So you don't even have to have this kit to get into guided surgery. You can do a pilot guide um, or a one-cut drill and just order one drill and do guided surgery as well. And again, the difference between a guided, a fully guided kit and a pilot kit is gonna look like this. The fully guided kit has the, has the built-in stops at different lengths into the shank of the handpiece, uh, uh, the shank of the drill. Uh, any other drill kit you can get to be fully guided, um, but it's gonna have the stops built into the guide as you see down here. Both will work. Tonight we're gonna to talk about doing the fully guided kit just because it's easier, but it's a couple extra steps to get you into a, a pilot guide or one cut drill or retrofitting your existing surgical kit to work with a guide. And 3D printers, again, this is the first one I got. These are robots, still love it. Um, they're actually, my print head went down on me uh, about a year ago and they are like short on parts. So I'm like waiting a year to get this thing fixed uh, or replaced, but I love that, um, that printer. I actually keep it on my, in my waiting room and patients love seeing stuff printing on it because it's the resin based ones. You can't see it while it's printing because it's happening in liquid, but this is an additive and it's uh, you know really cool to watch. Patients love seeing it. Relatively small investment, um, no post curing. Uh, it's just a, it's a great fun little printer uh, for small stuff, single guides. Um, it's really, really fantastic. The Form 3B, which is my go-to nowadays, is uh, you have some post curing, but it's very easy to do. And it's very easy to delegate to staff. So that's for me a big advantage. Even though the cost per se was higher, um, it's about $5,000 for a, uh, form 3b you can get a, a small desktop scan, uh, printer for 500 bucks but it's just a lot more work goes into getting a print out of it a form 3d is really just plug and play and i taught my staff how to put it on take it off post cure it and they take care of all of it for me nowadays and it's a great printer really a, really great um and just as an aside again it's not a plug for uh, the form but uh i had a couple of uh, print fails where it just wasn't adhering to the, to the build plate. Uh, I actually contacted Rick, asked him, you know, what do you think it is? He said, just re-sand down your plate and it'll be great. And it was. But Form is constantly seeing what's going on in your, on your printer. And they sent me an email. We see you had a couple of fails. Can we help you? And that really blew my mind. And I told them, you know, Rick Ferguson already fixed it for you. So uh, not an issue. But I was so impressed with the proactive nature of that. Um, and that they could even talk to my staff and have sent an email to the office and have the problem fixed before I even knew it was there. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, and of course, Lab Pronto. You don't have to have a printer. You can send it to Lab Pronto. They'll do all the planning for you and they'll do the printing for you and ship it in the mail and you'll have it in a couple of days. You can even rush it and have it tomorrow. To me, one of the greatest advantages of having a printer in house is that I could do it quickly. I could see a patient today and they can come back you know, in an hour and we can have a, a guide ready. Usually it's gonna be the next day that they'll come in, but just to have that available is, is really fantastic. And that will run you about 60 bucks, give or take, again, number of implants, how much you want them to do for you, but it's a fantastic option. Post-curing, again, varies greatly of, of uh, what kind of a post-cure machine you'll have. They can run high, they can run you know, pretty inexpensive, just a nail cure will work also. I know Corey Glenn likes to put it, as he says, on the... Uh, on the roof of his of his car outside his, his office. That's how he secures stuff and just lets natural sunlight do it for him. He's got much better equipment nowadays, but uh, curing can happen just with UV light. So it doesn't take a lot. Again, to get started is very easy. As you graduate and want to do things faster and better, you can graduate up to a better one. And a computer, again, you want, you know, existing computer specs, you want something with a good, you know, at least i7 processor, at least four gigs of RAM, but you know, whatever doesn't break the bank to buy, the faster processor and better video card that you have will just make everything run much nicer. 
Um, and I always say mouse with a scroll wheel is really important. And we'll see some of the things you do in the blue sky plan, a scroll wheel is very helpful. Or you can outsource the planning also. Um, I, I'm happy to do any uh, guides for you. Uh, I charge about 200 bucks for, for it. And they can print it and send it out to you also. We'll email it to you via bio bid box. Or you can send it to your local lab to print and you get it even faster. So basically, cost-wise, what you need to get started could be very high or could be very, very low. So, you know, almost nothing. Uh, so don't let any of that get in the way of getting started with, uh, with uh, surgical guides. Anyway, um, why do we use them? You know, precision and accuracy. Precision is hitting the same place on that target versus hitting the intended place on the target. So surgical guides are extremely precise, but you have to give all the information and verify it to make sure that it's accurate. Last thing you want to do is have everything just off a skew on your scans, and then by the time you get to your uh, your surgical guide, everything is very precisely a skew the same way as you set it up. Um, tooth versus bone versus mucosa supported. Tooth supported is the way to start because it's a fixed thing in the mouth. It's not going to move. Easily verified and just the easiest thing to do. Once you move into mucosa, there's just more give. So. We're generally going to want things in occlusion to make sure that everything's sitting nicely. You want to verify it as easily as possible. Bone supported, you, you need a really clean um, uh, creation off of the, uh, of the CT scan of an STL file of that bone that it's going to be able to fit down nicely. And again, we're always looking to verify things. So if there's teeth in the mouth beforehand, it's always easier to set up a guide off of a tooth than it is off of anything else. Potential areas of error. I'm just going to run through these a little bit quickly just in, in deference of time tonight. Um, your CT has to be calibrated properly. The voxel settings, this is all done when you get your CT scanner set up. The technicians will help you do it. Patient movement, really important. Patients got to stay very, very still because if they move their head to the side as things are spinning around, there's going to be distortion in that area. And they always know to move just when they're scanning of the tooth you're looking to do. Uh, so make sure that they're staying nice and still. Um, positioning the patient within the CT scanner is important to make sure it's not bumping against their shoulders. So you want to train your staff really well in taking CT scans. If you're going to use a stone model, um, obviously make sure it's very accurate or the optical scanner accuracy. This you tend to find more errors. If the scan is not scanning the teeth properly or there's errors, I'm actually going to show you a case where they void and how to work around it when you have it. But um, you want to not have any voids. It makes your life much, much easier. And intraoral scanning accuracy. This was an issue kind of earlier with cross arch stitching, but the newer scanners really not much of an issue. Um, software errors, just making sure your merge is proper. And we're going to talk about that. That's probably the number one thing you have to verify. The printing or milling to make sure that's accurate. The post processing of the 3D printing, making sure you're fully curing it. And making sure that when you lay your in, place your anesthesia for a mucosa guide, that it's not going to displace the mucosa out of the way. So therefore it won't seat properly anymore. So oftentimes you'll want to make sure that seat a mucosa guide, make sure it's fully down. Um, I'll give them buckle infiltrations so I can put my anchors in already. And then I'll come back to the, uh, to the mucosa on the palate and inject there because that's oftentimes where it'll displace it the most. Irrigation, you want to make sure you have proper irrigation. And the biggest thing is operator error, making sure that everything is seated properly, stays in place, and then your, your drill will go exactly where you want it to go. And always remember the guide is not a replacement of the surgeon. Um, you know, the surgeon is the one that's planning everything and is actually placing the implant. Still, that may change one day with some of the robotics uh, coming to the market, but uh, it's never gonna be a replacement. You still have to know what you're doing. And even if you're outsourcing it, you wanna be familiar with the plan because last thing you wanna happen is you're unfamiliar with the plan the guy doesn't see it exactly, and you don't even know it, and you're drilling and everything's off angle. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you know the plan well. And I tell people when you plan it well, um, it's almost, the guide is almost just a bonus at that point, because once you've studied the CT scan, studied your exact angulation of placement, with that in your mind's eye, when you go to the patient, that oftentimes is enough to get the implant exactly into the right spot. But, um, if you're just going in blind and had someone else plan the whole thing and you didn't even look at it and just drop it into place, you could be you know, precisely inaccurate. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're really familiar with the plan. 
And experience obviously matters. Um, you know, that was the number one criteria was found in guided and non-guided surgery success. If you know what you're doing, things will go well. A guide is a great aid to that. That's never a replacement. So if you're brand new in implants, haven't taken any courses, haven't done anything hands-on and think a guide is going to get you all the way there right away, unfortunately, you're going to find out that you're going to be mistaken and, and end up with some major headaches. You want to make sure to know how to place implants first, and then guides will help you just make your skill level going from level one to you know level six, seven, eight, very, very quickly. Fully robotic surgery, as we talked about in 2017, this was the first fully robotic implant that was placed, obviously with a team of doctors in the room watching it. But uh, one day this will be uh, normal in dentistry, I, I believe, that uh, we'll, we'll be the ones planning it. You need someone who really knows what they're doing planning the implant, but the actual carrying out the surgery, that may be done with robotic hands one day. And that's totally fine. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, as long as it's gonna be as good as the surgeon's hands, uh, not a problem, but we're the ones that are gonna still be planning it and making sure that it's going into the right spot. So where do you start? You want to do your first case um, and you want to get started with this. Always choose a case that you would do guided otherwise and then make a guide for that. Meaning don't start your first guided case as a full arch with you know, crazy angles everywhere. You're going to be in for a rough ride because there's a learning curve to just getting used to what it feels like to place a guide. So don't have your first guide where you're reaching surgically and say, I don't feel comfortable doing this freehand, so therefore I'm going to use a guide as my first guide. First, get comfortable with guides, then move into those hard cases um, where guides can help you reach a little bit further. But don't have those be some of your early cases because you'll be in for a, uh, a, in for a headache. Uh, so the workflow involved. So CT scan, um, scan appliance, if there's going to be one. Most of the time, there's not. Um, and again, that changed. The Ferguson technique, you'll have an impression in place. Um, and if you have a denture, you want to make sure it's well fitting. When I do with my dentures, fully dentureless patient comes in, I'll take some light body PVS, squirt that on in the inside of the, of the denture, seat that down. So I'm basically doing a you know, soft reline of the denture to make sure that it's really seated properly. I get my best seating as I can, and then have them bite into occlusion with markers on both top and bottom uh, dentures. Uh, there's radiographic markers with these little stickers. They work great. You can use little gutta percha points and and uh, use some triad gel or something to hold them into place. Uh, but these little stickers work great because it's a single glass bead, it's radio opaque, and it fits right into place. We have them on the Blue Sky Bio website. You can leave a message in the chat or email me. I'm happy to send you a link, but they work out really, really well. Um, you're gonna digitize your restorative plan. You're gonna take an optical impression of the stone model or of the SDL file by your lab. We're going to do a digital wax up and we could do, I like to do single teeth right in blue sky plan. It's very easy. Anything more advanced than that, I'll use ExoCAD. Um, but if it's again, more advanced that I'm doing, you know, quadrants or arches, I want to make sure that I'm planning my implants where the future teeth really will be. So you want to make sure that it's done really accurately. So blue sky plan, mesh mixer also is great. Those aren't familiar with mesh mixer. We've got tons of videos on YouTube. Um, with some real experts talking about how you integrate mesh mixer into uh, dentistry. There's even Christian Brennis has been kind enough to upload years ago already. Uh, it's funny, I just think it's like part of mesh mixer, but I realized it's, it was an add-on that Christian put in there uh, that will have a full set of teeth, um, singles and arches already in mesh mixer. So it's just another additive on there. Um, analog wax ups that can be scanned into digital format. That's also possible if you still like doing wax ups and you're just more comfortable with that. Not a problem. Don't don't take that out of your workflow because you feel like you have to go digital. You can do an analog um, wax up, scan that, and then put it into place. So you're going to merge your uh, SCL file into a CT scan. And again, this is the most important thing because if this is off at all, this error is going to be carried out to every next step. So you got to verify that this is exactly right. And again, this used to be the most time consuming step in guided surgery. And you really had to have some expertise in matching these things. But I gotta tell you, I, I'm, I tell Michael all the time, a few years ago, they really perfected this. And uh, as long as they're not massive amounts of artifact, it's literally clicking a button and everything drops right into place. And I was really amazed by that. 
he could probably give an eight hour lecture on how that works. I have absolutely no idea, but it just does. So I'm very happy it does. There's uh, a question that came in, came in. I don't know if you're going to touch upon it later, but if you could sure. elaborate a bit more about how the verifier confirmed visually that the merge was done accurately. So we're going to show when you look at it, the cross section, you're just going to see a clean outline around the tooth. And we're going to just show that. And it's just, you're going to look at it with your eyes. You're going to see, okay, that's matching. And you'll see one that's not. And you'll say, okay, that's not. All right. So um, options uh, in Blue Sky Plan, the automatic version, you get some match points if you really want to get it dead on. Um, and it's again, most accurate when used with radiographic markers. But again, I've used to do it for every patient. Then we moved into like kind of half patients. Now it's like, I'll use markers, really edentulous patients when I'm, when I'm scanning your denture. And if they have a full mouth of metal that I need to put a PDS impression with some markers in, in place to make sure that I get this exactly. Other than that, it's hardly ever done anymore. And that's all credit to Blue Sky Plan. Um, and you always wanna verify this and we're gonna show you what that looks like. All right, surgical plan, we're gonna select our implant type, we're gonna layer implants into the ideal position to support their prosthetics, meaning wax up first. And then we look at how to place the implant. We draw a surgical guide and we cut some windows to see that we can verify it. And for single teeth, I tend to make pretty small guides. I used to make full arches for a single tooth. Now I make them really like three teeth across and the tooth in front, tooth in back, you can see it seating very well. So you hardly have to make a, a window for that. But we'll show you those cases at the end. Then you export your guide. It's $15 an export. Again, I still don't know how Blue Sky Bio makes any money doing this. Um, they still say that they do, but uh, it's really amazing how little is charged here. Um, printing guide in-house. Again, if you're doing the form, a moon ray, a cell rocks, or a lab pronto, or your local lab, every local lab is going to have a 3D printer. And they'll be happy to print it for you for whatever fee that they're going to charge. Usually it's around like $50 in that ballpark. Um, you know, cause of mechanical errors is the longer drills we're working with tend to have just a longer, what we call a wag, which means that you're, as the trajectory increases, the potential for something being off can increase as well. Greater bone density causes you to lean on it a little bit more. But the way I design my guides is I always start with a six millimeter drill. And I always want to make sure that that guide engages that drill right away. So the less the drill can move around within that guide, the less chances you have any error. And mechanical error counts for about, again, 62% of total guide error. Uh, so you want to make sure that limit all of those um, errors and you have a straightforward guides uh, just about every time. And what you're doing, it's again, come down to a pretty simple process. You're making an incision. They have a punch here, but I hate punches. Um, I have a whole lecture on why punches are, you know, totally undoes what we're trying to do in, in implant dentistry. You need attached tissue critically around implants. And if you want, um, you know, email me. I'm happy to send you a bunch of slides on, on cases of failed implants when you have no attached tissue and implants that last you, you know, decades when you have attached tissue. So I'm all, just about always making an incision. Um, and then seating my guide, making sure I've designed my guide with the incision in mind as well, so that my flap's not gonna get in the way. And then it's just follow the sequence, drill, 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 place the implant, it becomes that simple. Uh, metal distorts the picture significantly. So again, a lot of metal, uh, we're gonna wanna make sure to compensate for that. Um, I'm gonna skip over guide tubes a little bit because this gets into some of the nitty gritty that for oftentimes is unnecessary. This is just a screenshot of one of the most common errors I see where you go to place your, your guide and it's the tube just doesn't stick out of the, out of the tissue enough. So you just change the offset on it and we'll talk about that as well. And this is on some of the more advanced versions. If this is sounding like Chinese to you, don't worry about it. Uh, it only if it becomes an issue, you have to deal with it. You can change your offset, push it up a couple of millimeters and then compensate for that with the drill length that you're gonna use. So let's say here I planned a eight millimeter uh, implant and I just increase it two millimeters. So now to get my same eight implant, eight millimeter implant into place, I've got to use a two millimeter longer drill. So now I'm going to use my 10 millimeter to get an eight millimeter in because I've increased the offset. So therefore I'm going to need a longer drill 
for exactly that amount. So I'm never going to increase it by one millimeters because I don't have a drill to match that. I'm always going to increase it to the next drill up in the in the in the uh, in the process. But again, that's one of the more common complications that you'll see. Um, and the, again, the fully guided kit it just makes life so easy that it will just step 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 place your implant and it's in. And if I increase my offset by two, I then again have to then increase my length by two to compensate for that. That's one of the most commonly asked questions. That's why I just mentioned it here, that when we're changing the offset, how does that work? So I just want everyone to understand, offset means I'm bringing everything up two millimeters. So therefore that same drill needs to be two millimeters longer. Hope that makes some sense. If it's still a little bit confusing, again, mention the comments um, or certainly email me and we can discuss it in more depth. All right, so that is it for the lecture portion. That's again, very straightforward. I just wanna go through one or two cases tonight uh, just to show you how the steps work and just how simple it can be. And again, if it seems like Chinese in the beginning, please don't feel like uh, it's something I can't do. Um, it's just like playing a video game. The first time you pick it up, it's in the same little bit foreign, the controls, I don't know exactly how to get you know the Mario to move around on the screen, but then after you play it a little bit, it just becomes second nature. All right, so let's pull up a case here and close out my last case that I was working on. Let's actually, we're going to show this. This is my last patient of the day today. It was happened to be a great case. We're going to show this one. I'll show that one first. All right, so we're going to open up Blue Sky Plan. You've already installed it. It's going to open up. And if you'd like to follow along, um, I can make these scans available to you. Just again, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll send you a link for these same files that we're going to play with tonight. And now we're going to decide what do we want to do? So orthodontics, dentures, step analysis, those are all for a different, different day. Um, crown of bridge, you can already do yeah, crown of bridge. Looking, we're still looking amazing. at uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's change that. Thank you for pointing that out. We're going to share. Now let's just share. Share your entire desktop. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. You see Blue Sky Plan? Nope. We're still looking at the PowerPoint presentation. Great. Uh, there we go. Now we see Blue Sky Plan. Got it. Okay, good. Super. Okay. All right. So we're going to be doing a implant planning and surgical guides. So click the button. So now we can go into importing models, into importing the CT scan. But if you're doing one or two implant case, just follow the wizard and it'll walk you through. Good, so welcome to Blue Sky Plan. Which kind of um, model do you have? Do you have a model CT, which you've scanned a stone model? Do you have an impression of a CT scan or do you have an impression with markers? Based on that, and this impression with markers uh, is the Ferguson technique, based on that, it's going to tell you um, ask you which things to upload. So if you have a CT a STL file, which is the most common, we'll click on that. What kind of kit are you going to use? And again, Michael, I, I love the, the humility that you guys have and you put everything in alphabetical order, but you probably know this better than us. Um, how many guides are made for Blue Sky Bio fully guided kits versus pilot guides? Uh, like what's the most common kit used in, in uh, Blue Sky Plan. Do you have that information? Yeah, I would look at that. I'd have to definitely say the Blue Sky Bio fully guided kit. Of right. Course. So why let's put that at the top of the screen. I hate that <laughs> down the list to find it. Like as if it's just one other kit in the in the in the, in the world of uh, implants. This is the best kit. It should be right on top. But anyway, we'll say fully guided surgical kit and hit OK. I'll definitely note that down. <laughs> All right. So let's go to some of my So on my desktop, we had guided surgery test cases. So let's do this one first. So it's pulling in the DICOM data. All right. So this is just to verify that they were, that they were positioned properly. So the patient sometimes is positioned with the chin up that it wasn't done well, or the chin was down. You can realign it here, although it doesn't make much of a difference. This is just the amount of data that will be cut off. So anything that's black, it's just extra space I don't need. So I'll bring it up to the nose. 
just makes the file a little bit smaller. You could do the size, but again, it's not a major difference. You could just skip this whole step and hit OK in 90% in of the cases. Good. So it's already going to detect the nerves for me, assuming we're dealing with the mandible. And if you're dealing with axilla, you can tell it to cancel. But I mean, this is amazing. Like right away, it's found the mental foramen, and it will, in any case where the mental foramen is clear. But if not clear, it'll tell you, can't detect it. And then all you have to do is click on a couple of points inside of it, and it'll finish it for you. But let, we're going to verify here that it actually found it properly. We're also going to verify if there's an anterior loop, which there is in this case. And that anterior loop is over here, which means I'm scrolling forward from the mental foramen. And you can see what I'm looking at on this screen. This is my cross section. This is my panoramic. So if I scroll anteriorly and I still see this circle carrying forward, that is what we call an anterior loop. And it goes on for a couple of millimeters. And I can add to that down the road. Um, and for the intents of, of what I'm doing here, I don't need to right now. And it certainly I don't have an implant that's going to this spot here. So it's unnecessary, but always double check. The AI is great, but again, it's artificial. It's not actual intelligence. So it still needs your intelligence to make sure that it's gonna be accurate. So we're gonna follow it backwards also to make sure that it's filling in that circle and not deviating from this line. And what you're looking for is the nerve is, is encased in some cortical bone. So you can usually see some white in the circle. Sometimes it will kind of like die out on us that you don't see the cortical bone in every spot. You'll, you'll see it in the beginning, you'll see it kind of at the end. And sometimes you have to play some detective work to match it. But the software does a really good job of finding it if that cortical bone is present most of the way. And you can see in this case, it's pretty clear. And again, it does a really, really nice job. It is dead on accurate. That's really something. I will note that in a couple of spots, it's going to find the middle of that circle. So I'll blow this up for a minute so we can see this. So the AI is going to find the middle of the circle. But if I'm placing an implant and it's close, the nerve roof is actually up here. So just bear that in mind that uh, you're actually looking for where that nerve would be. When I trace them manually, I actually cheat and put it up here. I'd rather I have a little bit extra room to the nerve than less. But when you're doing that, just bear that in mind that that nerve is not, the yellow circle is not always exactly where the nerve is. In this case, we'd actually want to increase the diameter of that nerve to have it fit more accurately to what we are seeing on our screen. All right, just keep scrolling. Make sure we're out of the way and we've got everything we needed. Great. Do the same thing on the other side, even though we don't need to do anything there. Just verify that it's we got it correctly. Again, we'll likely see an anterior loop here as well. If it's on one side, it's almost always on the other. Good, and it stops about there. Just an interesting aside from the anterior loop, I'm going to keep going anteriorly, and you're going to keep following right here. And you'll see it gets really, really tiny. That's not an anterior loop. And that will actually go all the way to the end, and we'll usually exit on the lingual portion of the synthesis. That is just some extra. Um, nerve fibers. I have drill, drilled through those at, um, and you're not going to cause paresthesias from that. It's important to note it. And again, all things being equal, you don't want to drill through it. But if you have to, it's not a big nerve trunk. It's just a little, little nerve ending. And all right, we're following it through. There's a really nice job here. Good. Everything is perfect there. Great. Michael asked me to go through these cases in advance to make sure we don't have any faux pas. This, I had a second one that, that did do that for. This is actually a patient I just saw, my last patient before this lecture. And still, it's perfect. All right. Uh, we'll continue. Sorry, my window was over there. We're going to hit next. Now it's going to ask me to open my model. I'm going to go to that same patient. I'm going to grab onto the mandible. I hit OK. I'm going to tell it it's the mandible versus the maxilla. And now it is doing the alignment. And again, look, I've got metal on 
all the crowns on the right side. So it's actually going to be a little bit askew. I was expecting that. So we're going to show you how to fix that up. But it saw there's just too much metal on this side to get it exact. On its first try, it's actually quite, quite off here. But I'm going to show you how to fix that up. I'm actually glad it happened here. Good. It could be that if you raise the density threshold prior to doing the merge, and the merge would be more accurate. Ah, OK. See, I learned something tonight. Can I go back and do this one more time in the wizard? Uh, yeah. So I hit backwards. Just hit the, wait, wait, wait. On top of the step is all the options. If you click on the name of the step, then we'll redo the step. So if you click automatic model alignment on the top of the step that you're on now. And, oh, there we go. Let's Beautiful. see if that has better. A little bit. Let's try and bring the threshold down even more. Not still seeing something here. It's not matching. All right, we'll fix it in the, in the next step. We'll align it to the teeth. Because it's just trying to match where is that first two, then it's having trouble finding it. Can we do that in the wizard step? Yeah, you could, click, you could click manual alignment. Oh, perfect. OK, good. So if you see that happen, and you don't see a perfect outline, so what you're looking for is that outline in the cross section matches everything. But when there's metal in, in place, and especially large crowns like that with implants, sometimes it'll do that. What we'll do is you right click on the tooth, and you get these little, the crosshairs will show up. If you, and click on the tooth. And just click on the tooth in the panel. Right? So you don't have to be exact here. You just want to be in the same ballpark. And you can do a couple at a time. And what you're basically telling the computer is, look at this area to find a tooth. And that's the tooth I'm talking about. What got mixed up here? Because I have less teeth than in the mouth. Okay, Michael, I apologize. <laughs> Go through the scan beforehand. There's an error in the stitch here. And you can see it right there. My assistant just took the scan, and there's an error in the stitch right there. Okay, this case will not merge. All right, we're going to do another case. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's live webinars for you. There's less teeth here than there are in, in here. Something got cut off. All right, let's go back. I've actually never seen that once before from my scanner that it's actually just cut out teeth. Very interesting. All right, let's start a new case. X out here. And discard that. And let's try that again. Now we'll do the rehearsed case. All right, implant planning, one or two cases, STL model, loose kind of bio fully guided kit. Same thing here, you can cut off a little bit just to create the dead air, but just hit okay. Excellent, so let's check our nerves for us. And this is actually a case of a patient who came in this week who wanted things done the same day and we were able to do it for him. So you're going to see on this side, the match happened perfectly. On this side, it caught the mental foramen really well. But then it zagged. So 
So you could click set right for him and manually on the top of the step. Perfect. So it's, ah, so it's funny, this patient, I wasn't sure if it has a double nerve, but it looks like that they, if you could see a kind of a scan of an outline over down here, that nerve might be a double nerve here. And I think that's what's throwing it off. All right, so what we're gonna do is, one was done automatically, one we're just gonna fix. Bring it right back into that hole. Now, which is a couple of clicks, we fix it up. Last one in. And good. And that's as that's as hard as the whole thing to, is to fix if it's if there's an error. And again, you can see this kind of like shadow of a of a double nerve down here. And that's what threw the software off a little bit. Interesting. Okay, good. All right, next. I'll look at his mandible. I should have turned the brush out down. We'll see if it merges pretty well because there's much less metal here. Yeah, and that you see that it's actually dead on, even though the threshold is off here. A little too much skin showing. There's really only one crown and one filling on this side. And you see that merge is very nice. The way I'm going to check it is this my cross section. And you see the outline of its around the teeth. That's what we're looking for. If it's off, you would see the outline out here. It would be off and just askew. But when it's wrapping around the tooth, just like that, that's exactly what you're looking for. So we know we have an accurate merge. And I usually check at the tooth, the adjacent teeth right around it. On crown teeth, it's harder to tell because of the artifact. But as long as you see every other tooth is a dead on, which it is here, you'll see, you'll know that the crown is as well. Okay, great. Right, next again. Now it's going to ask us to wax up a tooth. So let's grab onto 19. And let's just go with the max and let's assume a 4.3 by 10. We'll change it as we need to. And then I'm just going to click onto the space. And it's going to put the tooth into place. And I'm just going to change my angulation. It's going to automatically put the implant directly under the crown. And right now, I don't care where the, where the implant is. I'm looking to put this crown exactly where it needs to be. You can see the crown's a little skinnier than the area. So you just grab onto this ball on the end. You can pull the museo distal size of the implant or the crown that way. You do the same to make it a little bit of a wider tooth. And that's just about dead on. Open contact here, so let me close that up. All right, that's looking good. Just a couple of clicks, we're right there. Let me rotate it just a hair. Bring it back this way, just a drop. Beautiful. Okay, next again. And now we're gonna to touch up where our implant is. So again, this is a patient that had, had nice bone, so pretty much where my prosthetic crown is gonna be, if I have bone to support it, which I do, we're really in business. 
The only thing I would say I do a little differently here, and this is a little bit of a nitpick, but I'm looking at also my emergence profile. So where am I going to, from the platform of the implant to the contact point, does the lab have enough room at this depth to be able to close that contact well? So I always like to place my implants a little deeper. So I drop this down just a little bit. Now it's telling me I'm getting a little bit closer to the nerve. Not really. That's my error message here. Oh, the software tube. So the tube is going to tell me it's a new problem. But the tube is too far down and you've got to elevate it. That's going to be a little of an issue here, but that's no big deal because we can just raise the software guide tube and take care of that right away. Okay, I can put it a little deeper. And to me, when I look at this, that's a nice emergence profile. Now, those couple of millimeters are critical. If your implant's too high, your lab is going to be stuck and you left the bulky crown. If your implant is too low, the lab can fix that easily. And Blue Sky actually just came out with taller healing abutments for just this concern, where you can place a implant, you know, really sub subosseous in some cases, and now you just need a taller healing abutment to uh, to uncover this implant. So they've come out with some much longer healing abutments just for that purpose. All right, we're looking good there. Okay, next again, our guide tube is already raised, so it's out of the way completely. The most important thing, the outer circle can hit the teeth, no problem. The inner circle has got to be clear of any teeth because that's where the tube is going to go and that's where the drill actually engages. This is just extra space around it. So now we're going to draw our, our, our guide. I'm right-clicking again and just drawing a line. You can do this really quickly. And then as you let go, it drops these nodes, which you can correct. And I also like this case because Sometimes in the lingual, it just cuts off on an internal scan and you just don't have depth to be able to place it, but there, it will still compensate and you can still make a guide without an issue. So I'm just going to go from the tooth, and just drag across, even though there's nothing there, until there is something there again. Good. Occasionally, a node will get lost here. So you can either grab the node and drag it into place like that, what I call like untangling these nodes, or right click to get this cross again and just draw a new line and it'll fix it for you. And that was a nice add-on that was, that was fixed. Okay, good. So even though there's no SDL space here because it just got cut off in the scan, which will happen occasionally, the software knows that it's gonna just drag it across and fix it that way. Good. Let's see, I'm gonna just make this a little bit better on that crown. Drag that across. I'd like to do about halfway across this because you'll see when we make the guide, it'll spill over a little bit further. I don't want it wrapping down past the tooth. I want it to stop on the tooth so I can see it. And I'll usually go another tooth across. And that's really it. That's about the size of the guide that I like. We'll hit next again. That's fabricating a guide. And I've got like a thousand screens open here. That's why it's taking its time. Usually this is a couple of seconds, but the slower computers will take a little longer. All right, so the guide actually did spill over still. It didn't last time I did this, but it did here. So I'm gonna actually cut that off manually, um, but we'll leave that for the end because what I wanna see is to verify. When I see this, I can see right inside of here. I can see right inside of here. I can see the outside of the guide here. And I also like to see the outside of the guide here. So we'll be able to, I can redraw that so it doesn't spill over quite as much, but we'll leave that alone and I'll cut that off manually. And I could do that again with a burr or I could just do it before I print it, just cut that off. All right, let's go ahead and next. And we'll save it. I'm just gonna save this to my desktop for now. And let's say hit yes, because if this is going to a lab, you want to put in all of your information. 
and sign off on the guide being exactly like you want it to be. All right, I gotta check off. Approving the planning. I'm approving the surgical guide. Apply and save. I uh, space my account. That's must be logged into. I've got a couple of blue sky uh, accounts. Let's ignore that because it's just going to export it. Okay, so this puts me right to Lab Pronto. And I can put in all my options here to send it. So number of JAWS, put in your patient identifiers, how the model is being sent. In this case, we're doing none, digital files, shipping, if you want to label or not. If you want a case review, we'll have the lab call you. In this case, we just did it together, all set. Number of implants, we're doing one here. But in this case, it's actually two, two implant cases for the other side. System, Blue Sky Bio, Surgical Kit, Fully Guided Kit. Let's actually call it Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Kit. Tooth position was 19. We already did this planning, so this becomes superfluous. Everything else is fine. If you want a study model, and this is actually a nice option sometimes, if you want to do a trial run of your surgery, have them print a study model and you can actually place the implant on a study model and go through the drill sequence and get comfortable with that. So it's a really nice option. It'll cost you 50 bucks to have them print it up for you. It's a great option. If you're printing yourself, it's very easy to do. If you want to have a provisional crown done, it's outside the scope of this lecture, but you can have a provisional made already in advance. And if you need it, you know, Quickly versus not, they'll just add a little bit on the order. Any additional information, continue and you'll attach it. And that's really it. So again, they, they wanted me to take provisional crown, no provisional crown. No, I'm fine with that. Print study model, no. Where did I forget here? Oh, patient identifier. And then we just attach the file that we just um, export and send it off. Good. And again, here's my, what drills I'm gonna need, the color involved, just again, step-by-step, step, very easy. These drill reports were really important in the early days when you had so many parts that it was impossible to keep track of everything. Now this is, you know, it'll tell you the tube you'll need to order, um, but otherwise it's just follow the instructions of the guy. Use the next uh, size up one step at a time, and that's really it. And that's it in a nutshell. It's really that simple. If you're printing it, you would export this as a separate export. If you're sending it out to the lab, you'd send it to them. So hit OK. And it will already put the information in for you. If you're going to buy a whole kit, it puts it in your cart for you. If you just needed one tube, it's in the cart for you. Um, and the implant itself is in the cart for you. Like this couldn't get simpler. And you just hit OK. If you already own the kit, you would take that off. You already have the implant in stock, you would take that off. You already have this in stock. But this way, there's no guessing. There's no you just have to write down these little numbers and go back and find it. It's already like done for you. It's amazing. Okay, so let's close the wizard. And now if I want to do any specific touch-ups to this. So at this point, I'll usually turn off the original. So all I'm seeing here is not the uh, patient anymore, but just the SDL file. And let's say I wanted to cut this off. There's a couple of ways I could do it. One is just manually cutting. So I'll click on the guide, surgical guide, and I'll hit the cut option. I'll turn off the model. So back on there, click on cut, and then just draw a line. 
and cut that out. Uh, so it hollowed out the mesh for me. Okay, I'm gonna do it a different way. I usually don't do the cut. I usually will create a window instead. So let's undo that. Press the undo button, top left. Or control Z, it's even easier. Or control Z. And let's put create a window in here. Go back to the guide panel. Am I creating a window? I'm usually right clicking it, so it's create window. You know, I can go, I can move to um, advanced mode to do it. Do I need to be in advanced mode? To Create a window yeah, here, Michael? I think so. Yeah. Give it. Okay. All right. Good. So we're advanced. Actually, as part of the wizard process, I think you could. I skipped over that. Way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I should leave that alone for now because this, this obviously would fit just fine anyway. Another thing I like to do is put in, the, put in some text. So let's say I'll put the patient's initials or the size of the implant, or if I change the offset. I'll put that information in. So I just remind myself that there's an offset here. So let's say I'll be offset it here by two. So I'll write plus two. And I'll put that on the side. And the way to increase or decrease the size, you zoom in, you zoom out. So the more I zoom in, it makes it smaller. The more I zoom out, it makes it bigger. Put it right there, hit apply text. And there it is. And I'll Put any other information on the occlusal here, just whatever I want to write on for the patient. I'll emboss it right on there. And that's it. That's a guide. It's really that simple. Just follow the steps, uh, put the implant where you want it to be. Again, have in mind how you want your implant to be placed. Ideally, and you saw I brought it down a little bit further to be able to give myself a nice emergency profile. And uh, my implant's all set. So again, I spent, you know, I could do this. I've done many of these, I could do them pretty quickly. But I tell patients, I spend more time in front of a computer than I do in surgery. And that's better for everybody involved. All right, let's handle any questions. I repeat the Ferguson technique, just in terms of time. Um, I'm going to leave that over for uh, just look it up on YouTube. Uh, Rick has put it up on YouTube. It's on there, very straightforward. Um, and you can find it on there. If, you, if you'd like to stay after, we could discuss it directly, but I'll skip through there. Speak a bit slower, I apologize. My wife complains all the time, um, but hopefully that's already done. Guide to use a pick down snugly. Recently, guys are so tight. I'm going to guess if your guide to just sitting down tightly, if you're, this is for Jason. Uh, Jason, are you um, printing yourself? Because if so, I'm guessing it's the tolerances on your printing. And if you're still there, you asked this question about 45 minutes ago. But a lot of times it's the tolerances on printing. Um, so if you see consistently that you're having, uh, you're too tight, uh, you could just increase it by a drop, the, the diameters of it. And the way you do that, is in the implant list. You have to be under the advanced mode, but the guide hold diameter. So that's the standard. So if it's fitting that it's too tight, just increase it by, Michael, what would you suggest? Tenth or Probably hundredth of a millimeter? Another tenth, yeah. Tenth. So instead of 5.44, we'll go 5.54. That will just increase it a little bit and your guide will slip right in. The instructions are available in PDF format or a written format. So the best of my knowledge, no. The wizard is the written format. Like it's already there. And what I would do is take this. This will be up on YouTube uh, pretty soon. 
and just walk through step by step. Watch me do one. I'll leave again, send me an email. I'm happy to send you these files. And you can just literally follow this exact file step by step and we create this exact guide. Good. Any other questions? Okay, we're good. All right. Thank you, everybody. This is great. And again, if you need to reach out to me for anything else specific, my in, check in the chat right at the top. I left my email address implant mss at gmail.com. And you're always welcome to send scans. I'm happy to review them for you. And if you want to just go through a one on one session where we will just do this, walk through every step of the way, create your guide, export it, and send it off to print, happy to do that as well. Okay, so just to address a few. Uh... Issues. So first of all, this should be available via our website and channels and YouTube, um, probably starting tomorrow. So if you want to rewatch this, you could go ahead and do that. We also have a lot of back in slower mode, so you can hear me better. You could slow down the playback speed. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we also have a lot of educational information available for free on blueskyplan.com and then click on education and you'll be able to see additional training tutorials on a variety of different topics. There is actually a help manual. If you go to the help menu and there's an option there to see a PDF file. We also have a wiki that's available as well and accessible via our website that has all the information available online. Um, as to repeat a few points I mentioned at the beginning, you could see the upcoming webinar schedule on blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2022. Uh, we have a webinar around once a week for the next several months on a variety of different topics with fantastic speakers lined up. So I highly recommend checking out the schedule and registering for the relevant webinar sessions. They're all available at no charge and they all uh, will award one CE credit, which will be sent via email. Um, okay, so I think that pretty much takes care of everything. So Robert, thank you so much for your time. Thank you Pleasure. so much for continual ongoing education and assistance that you provide both to the Blue Sky team and to the relevant clinicians. Um, and everybody, if you're not part of the Blue Sky Bio user group, then definitely on Facebook, check that out. There's a lot That's of huge. free educational content there. Uh, a lot of people posting cases, reviewing cases, giving tips and tricks and hints. And as I mentioned, if you haven't updated to the latest version, version 4.9 of the software, then please go ahead and do so. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'd like to thank everybody for, for attending. And uh, Robert, thanks again. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you.